Hey guys, hope all is well. Um, happy February. Um, back in in the five minute pool. Let's get started. So I'm going to put myself in the queue and uh, see what comes out. Um, yeah, um, very, very excited. Looking forward to playing today because uh, yesterday was such a good day um, as far as uh, just playing was concerned. I think I had a clean sheet, didn't have any losses, and uh, maybe I, it was. Those are good days when you don't mess up really badly. So e4, I'm going to go c5, uh, keep my aggressive spirit from yesterday. And c takes e4, knight takes e4, knight f6, knight c3, a6. And this is a Nardorf. And h3 is really the most common move these days. Um, uh, it's really just to play g4 at some juncture, but it's really a hot, hot move. And there are two moves black typically plays, e5 or e6. I think e6 is a little bit more popular, but I'm going to go with e5. Um, in these lines, yeah, the knight normally goes back to, e to e2, and then I'm going to go h5, which is a little bit of a weird move, but it has the idea of stopping this g4 move, and um, yeah, it's an interesting move. So bishop e6, uh, bishop g2, this is normal, knight bd7, and my plan is essentially going to be to try and... b3 is a very weird move to me, though. Uh, typically, I think they try to go knight d5. My plan is I'm not going to castle right away. I'm going to try and keep the pressure on uh, on Black's uh, king. So if he castles, I might have a little bit of a target, maybe attacking the h3 pawn. Maybe I play h4 myself at some point, although h4 usually responded with g4. And I'm just going to keep my king in the center for a little while, play rook c8 and all these types of moves. Hmm. So a4 is interesting. Um... Maybe I played knight b6 too quickly, I don't know. Um, I'm wondering if I can go d5. d5 is always this thematic move, but uh, after d5, he can go a5. And then the question is, can I go d4? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Well, I'm going to go for it just because it's, it's, it's a blitz game and it's interesting. So a5, d4, and now he could play a takes b6. And what was my idea? I could take on c3 right away, or I could play bishop b4. What is better? I think I'm going to take on c3 right away. And knight take and knight c3 is played. And then bishop b4, I thought this pin would be a little bit annoying. Yeah, because now bishop d2, okay, it gets out of the pin, but it's still annoying. And, uh, okay, now I can go queen takes b6, and I... Uh, the material's equal, and I don't think I'm really worse here. Um, or at least that was the thought. Um, so that I don't know. I don't. I don't mind my position just yet. Although maybe in this previous position I could have played queen d4 and actually won a piece. I don't know. Oh no, there was rook a4. All right. So knight d5. Uh, I pretty much have to play bishop takes d2, right? Check. Or I could play bishop takes d5. Hmm. I'm like all over the place today. I have no idea what to do with my pieces. I'm going to play bishop takes d5. It's a little bit weird because it gives up the two bishops, but um, I'm thinking maybe I'll have some counterplay here. And I have to make a tough decision. Do I go queen d4 maybe? Maybe that's the move. Or bishop takes d2, or bishop c5. I'm going to go queen d4. The point is, is that I'm just hitting the d2 bishop, and it's pinned, so he has to uh, think about trade uh, playing bishop takes b4, so I think that's what he's going to do. Um, yeah, takes, takes, and then queen d2, I think he's going to go for this. Yeah. And I don't actually want to trade queens. I'm going to try to establish control in the dark square. So I'm going to go queen d6. And now castles. And yeah, it's about time I get my king out of there. So maybe I'm going to castle now as well. And I'm wondering uh, if I have any play. Uh, I have any compensation based on my dark square control. So I'm going to play b6 and then a5 to sort of establish a dark square bind 
and then um, and then maybe play and then sort of argue that uh, that it's uh, my knight maybe can be one day better than his bishop. So rookie eight is a very important move just to protect the e5 pawn again. And maybe in some lines I could play e4. Something tells me that white should be better because he has the two bishops, but I don't know. I mean, not the two bishops, but the bishop over the knight. And the queen sort of acts like, the queen can potentially act like a bishop on its own, right? Like sort of pro uh, patrolling the dark squares. Um, so I, I have a feeling that white is probably a little bit better here, but I, I still like my dark square control. So I'm going to go, uh, if he doubles, I'm going to go rook a e8. So that's why I went rook e7. All right, queen g5 doesn't threaten anything, so I'm going to go a5. Hmm. He can go b4 now, but he didn't, and I'm happy about that. Now I'm going to go rook a e8. And again, I, I think I have good dark square control. I just have to cover some more squares. I would love if I could get in g6 and king g7 in. Uh, just putting my king on a dark square and then free up my knight to move. Yeah, so he went bishop f3 attacking h5, so I'm going to go g6. And now if I can play king g7 uh, just to sort of cover all my kingside pawns and keep putting my king on a dark square and then go knight d7 and knight c5, um, I really like where the maneuvering can take me. Because, uh, again, my dark square bind is pretty good. Uh, yeah, so now I'm going to go king g7 just to shore up my king. And now I have, I'm going to try and go knight d7 next. And it looks like f4 is in the cards maybe for, for, black, for white, but I don't think it works here because I can just go e takes f4. But uh, I'm starting to win, win this maneuvering phase because you can see that he's sort of moving around aimlessly. F4, interesting move, but I think I can just take. I think that the two rooks for the queen here is, is not is not going to be enough because I'm, I'm picking off these pawns. So I think it'd be unwise for him to go for that. But on the other hand, I think other trades are not good either. Um, if he goes queen d4 check, I can go I can block with queen f6. Um, and I think this end game after queen takes f6, king takes f6, and then all the trading of the rooks will be really good for me because my king is a little bit more active and my knight is definitely uh, about to come to c5. So I'm going to take with the king so that my knight still has the c5 square. And uh, now rook takes, and also to protect my rooks. And yeah, now he goes for this move, um, important move, uh, rook f1. And I gotta figure out a way here. I'm gonna go g5 with the idea that if he takes, I'm gonna go g4 next. And it sort of restricts the uh, it restricts the, um, the 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 white bishop a little bit. But now I'm in a little bit of time trouble, so I'm gonna stop talking and try and just convert the game. Note that b4 is impossible here because I can still take and there's knight d3 check, which is a fork. And I think he's realizing that. That's why he had to wait to play b4. Ah, I missed that discovered check. Ah, oh, that was stupid. Oh, I totally just ruined this game. I missed I missed C5 check. I totally missed it. That was so stupid. Yeah, now I now I'm definitely not winning, so that sucks.
And uh, we're going to have a draw. So that's unfortunate. I think I had a winning position after uh, Rook F1. Um, once the Queens were off, um, Rook F1, I, I just hesitated for just a second. And, uh, and uh, I got a little bit sort of loosey-goosey with it. But you could see, at least from the game, that uh, as more pieces started to come off the board, my dark square control became a bigger deal. And it, was, it almost became a good knight versus bad bishop ending. Um, time trouble is time trouble, but not a bad game. It was really important for, uh, for White to do more in the, in the middle game and in the opening with the queens on uh, to really make more use of the, the bishop versus knight advantage with the heavy pieces on. But uh, my opponent was not able to do that. So, Anyways, back in the queue. Let's see who's up next. Uh, let's see who's up next. Um, so a draw, my least favorite result in chess. Uh, they really need to just do away with this whole draw thing. If only they found a solution, then chess might actually be more marketable than it is. Um, these draws just ruin everything. Um, so, anyways, all right. A GM from Spain, Issa Dung. Okay, I'm going to play d4 against this Issa Dung guy. d5, c4, e6. Not of not what you see every day. All right, c6. This is this triangle variation? Um, I actually played a tournament game, uh, if you've seen my videos, my last round game I played against this, and I played, when I played, I played knight c3, I'm gonna go for that. Um, I was a little bit worried about d takes c4 when I played it, but it's actually, I can just play e3, actually. And, uh, if he goes a4, there's, I mean, b5, there's a4, and then if he takes, there's some move here, actually. What was the move here? I think I, I should take and then play bishop d2. Ah, this is that theoretical line. I forgot what it's called, but uh, this is actually theory. And now they go b4. Yeah. And I actually don't know this line very well, uh, but it's uh, it's really popular. It's a really weird position because white is the central pawn, so black has these two pass pawns, and they're really, really annoying to deal with. Um, I'm going to play c5, which is sort of a weird move to make. Um, it's like, why are you giving up more light squares? But I think it's actually a move here, so that's why I'm doing it. Um, I was going to go queen c2. I honestly don't know what to do here, so um, it's your, my get, my, your guess is as good as mine, or whatever the saying is. Bishop c6, I thought he should stop be, shop, be stopping me from playing e4, so I'm going to go for it. Uh, I thought, I didn't, I didn't like that, that he's just allowing me this e4 move. Weird. Ah, oh, these pawns look really scary, but I'm hoping that I can blockade them. Um... So a3, I was thinking I can go bishop c1 and then blockade these pawns on either the dark squares or the light squares, because I thought they'd be hard to push from now. Uh, uh, I'm going to try and relocate the bishop to g5, if possible. All right, so queen b7 is sort of a nasty threat, so I'm going to go, because it threatens b3, I'm going to go queen e2. I think that covers everything. I hope it covers everything. Not sure though. Um, I, my bishop in C. My bishop needs to stay on C1, just covering everything. B3, I don't understand actually, because I why can't I play bishop takes A3 or rook takes A3 for that matter? No, bishop takes A3. I don't understand that move. Because if he goes b2, I just take on, I just can take it. So I think he just blundered that pawn. And yeah, his move confirms that he did. Because now I can just go bishop b2 and easily blockade the um, the a pawn. So I think he just he just blundered a pawn, unfortunately. But rook a2 is a move here. Yep, he does that. Makes sense. Um, and again, his 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 pawn is still a sort of menacing. So I have to be a bit smart with it.
Really tricky position, I must say. I'm going to take on a2 and play bishop a1. And I'm, I'm just going to... I think the pawn is effectively blockaded here. Um, there's some tactics that might, might be connected with queen b1 at a later date, but I'm thinking that my bishop on d3 and my rook on e1 are doing a good enough job covering that square. But I'm going to go h3 first to just give my king an escape square because he's sort of revving up, ginning himself up for queen b1. So I'm going to need I'm going to need to play king h2. That is going to be a necessity. Yeah. Queen b1 also attacks my uh, my queen, which is a bit annoying. Hmm, so I'm going to go queen e2. I think that covers everything for now. And uh, I need to start getting my pawns going. So if I can, getting in c6 or something will be not, will be very important. Maybe king h2 also. King h2 might be a move. Just trying to get my king off this pin so that it's not pinned and that any subsequent capture on b1 comes with check. Um but again, this a2 pawn is the chief concern right now. So I just need to sort of make some prophylactic moves and then maybe try and either corral it or continue to push my center pawns because I do have this advantage in the middle. All right, knight h5 is very clear trying to play knight f4, so I'm going to go g3 to cover that. And knight f6 back, and now I'm going to go king g2. Very important, again, that I get my king off the line. So I think I gained something in the past two moves because now my king is off the line. He has to come up with a constructive plan. Uh, and it's, it's sort of hard to come up with a plan here for black because this knight is a little bit restricted. Okay. So I'm going to go c6. I got to try and make use of my own pawns. Um, and knight f8, not a move you want to make. It's very, very passive. Um, and so now I'm going to go knight e5. And yeah, he's moving his pieces backward, which is typically a good sign. Uh, but So I'm going to go d5. Maybe knight d7, actually. No, I'm going to go d5. What am I saying? I need to continue to push my pawns. Past pawns must be pushed. I'm going to go knight f3 back. You might say, why are you retreating that knight back? I think the knight was doing an important job protecting the e1 rook. So, um, I, and so I I need to free up my queen, so that's why I'm doing that. Rook e8, very interesting. Can I take on e8? Queen takes, knight takes, rook takes, queen a1, c7, queen c1, takes, takes. No, I'm just going to move my queen to d2. Wow, I, I'm losing a lot of time, so I have to play fast again. Queen c3 is my next move if I get a chance. I'm going to pre-move my knight taking the queen on e1 just in case.
this is totally winning. So it's ma merely a, a, a matter of technique. Which I'm unfortunately not demonstrating right now. Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Wow, this is so bad. Oh, he blundered his queen. Thank gosh, my technique was awful just now. But now I have mate in a few. Oh, that was so bad. A few a few moves ago, I missed queen takes f7 check. Um, I was trying to trade queen so bad. And where was it? Yeah, in this position, I played knight e5. If I could play, I could play queen takes f7 check here, just... Winning on the spot, because if he takes king takes, I have 95 check. Ugh, I can't believe I missed that, but glad to win the game in the end. Really weird game, but I think the... I sort of had the advantage most of the way, because he, he sort of blundered uh, one of his queenside passers, and then in that case, I'm a pawn up, and I was able to sort of blockade the other one. White's advantage in that, lo in that line lies in the fact that he has the two bishops, so the fact that he has the two bishops and the central pawns means good things if he's able to keep it together. But it's a but it's a little tricky because black has all this counterplay uh, connected with those pawns, so it's tough to calculate. Anyways, new game. Who we got? Who we got? Uh, Got to keep my uh, my uh, clean sheet alive, you know. Um, I'm talking only two games in, like I've done something, but. Uh, you know, it's it's good. I mean, every every time you uh, you don't lose, especially if you win, every time you win, you just get injected with more, I guess, endorphins, confidence, I and mean, what do you want to call it? Uh, you just you get something, you get something from it. No doubt about that. So, um, I think that's why we keep coming back as chess players in a way is because we're so chess is like a drug, man. Like you're just sort of like addicted to the I, I mean, first you get, I think first you're attracted to the game for some reason. Normally it's, for most people, it's tactics, it's the flashy part. But why do you keep coming back? Well, I think it's because, first of all, you get exactly what you, you, you typically get exactly what you, what you put in. So you get out what you put in. I think that's one of the few things, right, where it's like totally, it's pretty much the, the fairest thing you can be engaged with because, um, you know, each side there's equal amount of, pieces and materials and it's just like sort of like the antithesis to life you know in many ways in terms of the fairness of it and then you have that and then you also have this notion of you know just when you lose you you feel like i at least sometimes i do actually when i lose in a tournament game that's pretty serious it's like or at least in the past it'd be like why am i why am i even doing this but when you win it's like you can't imagine doing anything else or you sort of understand why you're doing this because this is that 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 winning feeling is like makes it all better and so it's very much like a drug so anyways active kids all right i'm gonna play c5 against this active kid oh the close sicilian the worst honestly i just this opening just gets on my last nerves it's just not i just i have no respect for it that's the problem actually is that I have no respect for this opening. Um, uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go rook b8. A very quick b5, b4, I think is always pretty good in this line. Um, and uh, very important that I don't play uh, knight... Um, what is it? Very, it's very important that I don't play knight f6 really quickly, because then he has bishop h6. I'm going to go h5. It's not correct, but it's just for the the giggles. And h4. Now it, now it's like a real it's real uh, aggressive play. Hmm. I was looking at tactics connected with deflecting the bishop, but it's a little bit too slow. I want to play like h3, but he can go bishop h1 or bishop h3, but then still he can then he can take on d4. But h3 is a pretty cool move if you didn't have bishop h1 because of the fork. Hmm, maybe I can play... 
Nah. Nah, I'll go back. I'll go back. I'm having a little bit too much fun analyzing these lines that don't work. It's uh, It really gets you analyzing lines that don't work, you know? Um, so now my idea is actually to play knight g4. Oh, why did he take... That's really not smart to ruin his pawn structure like this. Um, really not smart. Should I play knight g4 or should I just take... Because knight g4 is bishop g5, so I'm going to take this. But my idea is to play knight g4. And now I'm just going to go back with my rook. Maybe rook eight. Yeah, I'm going to go back with my rook. And... Uh, my king is sort of safe. I mean, it's not totally safe, but it's sort of safe. Go bishop. Go bishop d7, maybe, to protect my rook? I don't know. Uh, go bishop d7. Wow, now he's playing really aggressive. f4. Oh, and he gave me this bishop, which he should not have done. Can I castle still? I think I can. I'm going to take here first. And then I'm going to play queen a5. And he doesn't know that I can castle. I'm going to castle. I just sort of disguising it a little bit. Like maybe he's going to forget that I can castle. E5 might be an idea here, uh, which would... E5 for white. Um, yeah, but okay, no, he doesn't do that. And now I'm going to castle. I think I held out long enough, and now I'm going to castle. Oh, no, I can't castle. My rook went from h4. Oh, jeez. Oh, I totally forgot that. Oh, that's a big deal. Oh, man, I totally forgot that my rook had moved already. I, of course I can't castle. That's bad. That's real bad. All right, I gotta play e6. Time to reevaluate my situation. Um, oh, I, t I I totally forgot that I couldn't castle. So, knight of six check looks logical now. Um, I sort of wanted that because I thought maybe the the f pawn could cover my king a little bit. Rook b5 is very cute. He's sort of trying to go for. Uh, he's trying to make me take it, but now I'm gonna go queen d8. And I actually think rook b5 is really stupid, because now knight of 6, I, if he plays it, I just win a pawn. So I don't know why he didn't just play knight of 6 check. I'm not going to fall for that. And now I can play queen takes g5, and that's a free pawn, buddy. So what was the point of all that? And you're pinned. That was really stupid. I have no idea what he was doing there, but it wasn't smart. Now I can go bishop h6, and now I got some real pins going on. Oh man, I just missed bishop takes c3, which was a pretty neat tactic. But, okay. Oh my god, I just missed knight e5, which was also a really neat tactic. But it, it works here too. So knight e5, and now my point is I'm hitting the bishop on d7 and the pawn on d3. If I take on d3, though, he has rook takes d7, so I, I don't I don't like that. I don't like that. So I'm going to go queen f4 just to sort of stop rook takes d7 ideas. You know, I'm always really wet, ready and eager to trade queens, so, uh, you yeah, know, that's that. Um, but okay, knight takes d3 is a threat. Um... No a5. Why give him? Why give him that pawn? He is knight d5 check here, which is sort of weird. Yeah, I didn't. I missed that, and now I have to go to f6 with my king, which I don't love. Ah, and queen e7 is a threat as well. So I'm gonna take here a check first. And, okay, and then go bishop e6, which luckily saves me. My queen e7 check was a threat, now my king is covered. And I think black is still much better here, because I have the two bishops, and I'm a pawn up. But, again, the time, always, I'm getting into not time trouble, as I astutely pointed out in one of the comments, but actually, 
uh, talk trouble. It's where I talk my way into not really thinking critically about good moves. So again, my plan here is to, I'm going to play bishop f4 and just target h2. And uh, hopefully that should be enough to sort of win the game. I, th I think bishop f4 would be close to winning. Um, all right, so actually, no. First, I'm going to go... Yeah, I'm going to go bishop f4. Uh, and then he's going to go rook b8. Probably. And then I'll go rook c8. Maybe bishop c8. I don't know yet. I don't understand rook b1. Hmm. Again, I'm just trying to make sure all my pieces are protected and I don't blunder anything. Um, so that's why bishop f4, uh, that's why g5 is played. And now I'm going to move my queen to attack c7. And I think it sh I think it should drop. If he goes knight h five check, I just go king e seven. The time is getting low, so I just want to trade some pieces and then get to this winning endgame, which I know to be winning. Just trading queens. Although, he actually had rook f1 uh, the previous move. Luckily, he didn't see it. Now I'm winning. Uh, but I have 17 seconds, so I'm actually not going to do any more talking. Ah, uh, I flagged. Uh. Talk trouble. Talk trouble. Totally winning position. Talk trouble. I hope uh, I hope you guys at least got a glimpse of how strong the two bishops are. Um, the really critical mistake for him was uh, was giving me the two bishops, uh, and most of that end game I was just pressing. Like in the positions like this, you could just see how much work the two bishops are doing um, together. And they just do a great job of controlling diagonals, getting a lot of pressure on, and all that stuff. Um, of course, my conversion should have been and could have been way better. But I always hearken back to uh, this warning that you know you just don't you don't just give up bishops freely for knights um, unless you, there's a really good reason for it, because otherwise you will get punished. Um, you usually will get punished. So, all right. Who's up next? Ugh. It's always the worst when you lose a game uh, on time. It's like... I don't think I've ever lost a game on time in a... In a re Actually, I might have lost one game on time in, like, an actual, like, FIDE rated, like, long game. And, um, in a tournament. And, uh... Yeah, it's always the worst because... It's like... It's like not... It's not, it's not like you lost the game from the game, but it counts just the same. And the truth is, it's like, it's not really an excuse. It's not a good excuse. A lot of people are like, oh, I was winning, but I was in time trouble. Or like, oh, I was okay, but then the time happened and then I lost. And I mean, I make that excuse on this channel. 
but the truth is, um, I mean, it, like it's like the drunk driver can't say, "Oh, I was drinking," you know, like you're you're sort of culpable. <laughs> so of course, uh, this this is not as serious an offense as something like that would be, uh, the drunk driving um, example. But again, it's sort of your fault, um, and it almost always is your fault. The time is a part of the game, and so you have to use you basically use time as leverage to sort of get good outcomes or bad outcomes, uh, depending on what side you're, side of it you're on. So, all right, who is going to? I mean, ICC has got to be way better about just queuing me up quickly in the games because I'm tired of waiting all the time. All right, Sapper. Uh, e4, c5. I'm gonna go. I'm just. I'm playing Sicilian today. The other day was Kings Indians. Now I'm playing Sicilians. And uh, again, these. I, I, again, I don't think I've gotten a bad position against the closed Sicilian yet. So, um, at least from the opening. So you you tell me why the closed Sicilian is so good, and I'm gonna keep telling you why it isn't. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a little bit different. F4 is thrown in. Um, that is that does make it different. Um, Hmm. I'm gonna go rook b8, stand, and then b5. We'll just go very quickly for the b5, b4 stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm just not, I'm not buying this setup for white. I just don't, I don't believe in it at all. All right, so h3 has this idea of going, maybe g4 at some point. It also stops me from going, um, from going bishop g4. Um, I'm wondering what I, what I should do about that. Because if he goes g4, I castle right into that. That's a little. That's not fun. So I'm gonna go knight d7 first, just to sort of see what what white is gonna do. Because he might go g4, and then maybe it's not so bad that my king isn't committed there. Okay, so c3 I'm gonna take because now my my rook has an open b file, and then I'm gonna go bishop a6, just eyeing the d3 pawn. Um, and I think it I think it has been sort of useful that I delayed castling just a touch. Because if I castle then then he played g4, I might have had some problems. Um, but now at least my all my pieces are active, so yeah. Alright, so now he's going for it, he goes f5, but f5 really weakens the e5 square. So I thought if I go knight e5 here, um, I'm attacking d3 and I'm attacking the f3 knight, and I thought that'd be good. And knight f4, okay, now I'm gonna take an f3. And uh, I actually have bishop takes c3 now, and the rook is under fire. So that I think he might be losing an exchange. Uh, he's, he's down a pawn at least. And again, I don't think he has enough artillery yet to just destroy me on the king side. So um, that's, that was sort of the important thing, is that I, I got all my pieces out on the queen side. I got the queen side expansion and gains that I wanted. And then I castled, and it, doesn't, it just doesn't appear that he has enough here. Hmm. So he's n he's just giving me a rook for free, but is it for free? I think it is. I'm gonna take it. If he goes g takes h7, I can just go king h8, and my p that pawn on h7 is sort of protecting me. Uh, I'm not gonna take it. It's just sort of uh, providing effective cover. And okay, knight h5 again doesn't really bother me. I'm gonna go bishop d4. To pin the rook on f8. I'm on the rook on f2. And bishop h6 is a very interesting move. Um, the idea is to, uh, if I take on f2, uh, it's check, but then I'm offering maybe mate the next move. So I'm going to go f5 because the bishop is still, uh, the, bish the bishop, the rook on f2 is still pinned, and uh, I want to put, an I want to put my rook on f7 so that it's covered. Um, so I'm going to take on e4, or am I? No, I'm going to go, oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to go queen e8, which sort of gets my queen closer to, I want to put my queen on g6, and from there, okay, so he, he took on, on f8, but that, that's, I wanted him to give up his dark squared bishop, because now he doesn't have an attack at all. So, um... There's no checkmating ideas, there's no pieces on that square, so I'm sort of happy with this. 
And yeah, now I'm going to go knight e5, which uh, targets the f3 bishop. And I also have this idea of putting my own bishop on b7, which would be really nice on that long diagonal. And yeah, now I'm going to go bishop b7, which is a cheeky little move because rook if rook takes f5, I'll go queen takes f5. And he fell for it. Queen takes f5 now, now bishop takes g2, and again, the two bishops, man, they always, they always just, they work out so nicely. And I'm spoiled for choice here, I can win the queen. Wait, is that checkmate? Actually, I think it might, yeah, bishop f3 was actually going to be mate, he just blocks with the queen and then it's mate. So yeah, that's, that's, he resigned instead of mating two. Um, but again, look at this final position, um. The two bishops, I just want to emphasize how great they are. They are so great. And it's, again, this is why you have to be careful about just giving up bishops for knights, because bad things happen. In this game, he didn't even do that, but you could just see that the attacking potential is, and the long-term potential is both crazy. So, yeah. And, yeah. So, I'll play one last game, and, uh, okay, here it is. And maybe we'll get another two bishops type of position. So d4, knight f6, knight f3, d5. And okay, look, if he goes e6, we'll have a Catalan. If, yeah, I'm going to go Catalan this time. And if he went c6, we would have had a slot. So bishop e7, bishop g2, castles, castles, c6. Oh, this is this very solid, solid, solid line. I'm going to go queen c2. And then bishop f4. And this line is very solid for black, um, but it's okay. And 94 is a little bit early, I thought, for that move. I'm gonna go knight c3. I thought knight. I, I thought that move was actually way early. Um, and now I thought he's gonna go f5, which is the stone stone wall move that you make in this position, but he didn't. And now I'm gonna go rook a d1. It's a little bit of an unusual square to put the. Um, to put the rook on, normally you want to put the other rook on d1, and then a rook on c1. But I thought in some of these lines you go rook a d1 and then bishop c1 back, so that's why I did that. I'm going to put a knight on e5. I don't believe this rook e8 and knight d f6 plan at all, actually. Uh, I just, I think white is a lot better here. Because, I mean, the rook on e8 isn't doing anything, so. Hmm. H6 too. I don't. I don't like that move at all either. I'm gonna go F3. I I, I want to go F3. Try to expand, but I'm wondering if that's the best way. I can also go C5. I can also go G4. I think G4 is an interesting way to play. I'm gonna go G4. Well, I did go G4. And then bishop g3. And yeah, now now I'm sort of trying to play f4 and e4 or something like this. Interesting. I really want to go e4 now. Just I just want to sort of start a pawn avalanche. So I'm going to pr protect c4 before I do that. Just go queen d3, and then if I'm going to try and go e4 next. Because I, I could have gone e4 right away, but I didn't want to just give up a pawn for no reason. And the c4 pawn is a pawn, so. Uh, now I'm going to go e4 next if I can do it. Wow, it's so tempting to play queen takes, because I don't actually like this the look of h takes or f takes. No, maybe f takes. I'm going to go f takes. That looks sort of interesting. Uh, giving me the open f file, but typically you don't you don't want to capture away from the center. Um, but I'm just I'm feeling like an aggressive an aggressive move, and 
uh, and I'm in an aggressive mood, and it just looks like that might be fun. And all my pe I want to now I'm going to play rook d2 and rook f2, and all my pieces are sort of getting close, more and more concentrated towards uh, towards white's uh, uh, king side. So. I mean, towards Black's king side. So I'm, I'm now doubling these rooks, trying to get some pressure. Queen b6, I don't love. I'm going to go c5, target it with tempo. And there's also this plan of h4 and g5. That's also an idea. Um, and just, again, slowly concentrating my forces. E5, interesting move, interesting move. Hmm. Hmm. E5 really busts up my structure and activates his rook. That I don't like. Now I wanted to play now I want to play queen f5. Threaten, try and get my queen infiltrating that way. And I, he has to go g6 here. Now, unfortunately, my queen has to go back. I was thinking I'd have bishop takes g6, but now I'm not so sure. I thought bishop takes g6 and then queen f8, but ev evidently it looks like all the squares are covered, actually. Yeah, I'm going to go back to c2, because my plan was to go bishop takes g6 and then queen f8 check, but it, it doesn't look like there's anything after uh, after he plays king h7, so now I'm just down a pawn uh, in a worse position, unfortunately. Maybe a losing position now, because I'm hanging c5 as well. But if he goes queen takes c5, I have queen f6, which is a, a nasty tactical resource. Ugh, I, uh, something went wrong here. Something definitely went wrong. Now I gotta try for some last ditch, last ditch tactical, ep, tactical tricks, but they shouldn't actually work. The first of them is to play bishop c2 and queen h1. <laughs> or rook h2, something like that. Get something, some heavy piece to the file. And he might have blundered, folks, because now the rook is hanging, and I'm threatening. Uh, I'm also threatening uh, queen h7. So, yeah. 
So now I at least get to play this ending that there might be, that I think there's some actually some chances for me in. Now and actually, I think now it's actually pretty equal, close to a draw. Got him. Got him. Caught him with the tricks. Wow, this is not a clean game. I will take it. I will take that victory. Um, definitely had a big space advantage, but I decided to get cute trying to attack on the king side. I could have played it a bit more positionally, but I'll take it. I'll take the W. Um, well, I think pretty much from the this, this series, we pretty much learned that the two bishops are really important and that, um, yeah, you shouldn't blunder when you have big space advantages. Sometimes it's actually better to sort of methodically, gradually build it up. Um, the nature uh, of the time situations sometimes um, gets me to sort of rev up the engine a little bit quicker than uh, I normally would and uh, gets you into trouble. But, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I will uh, be back soon with more.